In addition to the cost-cutting measures we have discussed, a thorough analysis of all systems will almost always further reduce costs. This includes mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire suppression systems. An early concern with joist design is planning for MEP systems. On all projects, you should strive to align joist panels. This not only looks good, but also helps control costs for various trades in bending, cutting, and connecting work. The sprinkler system is a key area for proactive planning for cost prevention. Things can go wrong in many ways. ESFR systems come with stringent installation and design requirements. NFPA 13, Section 8.12.5 establish clear rules for sprinklers, especially in regard to obstructions. The central challenge here is to coordinate on sprinkler system requirements. It's essential to get certain information from the ESFR sprinkler contractor, such as branch line locations, branch line outside diameter, distance from bottom of deck to center of branch line, and minimum clearance between branch lines and bridging. Also include special notes to the erector to maintain proper clearances. The manufacturer should provide information on sprinkler lines, diameters, and bridging, as well as proper installation, operation, and maintenance. Costly field adjustments can be eliminated by coordinating, communicating, and remaining flexible. Various studies report a 10 to 20% cost savings through clash prevention. Early joist supplier involvement can reduce the cost of the structural steel package by up to 20% according to the American Institute of Steel Construction. Here again, we see two areas for cost reduction. One, reduce errors and reinstallation costs. We have seen how the rework of just five joists can add over $6,000 to a project. And two, reduce the chain reaction of related costs. Let's look at ways to optimize the design for additional cost prevention. Use deeper seats. For R-type extensions, there may be savings by increasing the extension seat depths from 2.5 to 5 inches deep. This can provide the required design strength with less steel. Designate load and locations. Knowing loads and the location of loads on joists will decrease costs. Precise information for joist sizing is imperative. Study the layout. Try alternatives to framing. Avoid transferring moments through girder seats. Keep load path continuity simple to reduce fabrication costs. We just talked about using deeper seats as a way to cut costs. With proper planning, it can be this easy. Another clear way to optimize is to specify the actual loading for an extension design. Anytime the R-type extension number is greater than the K-series joist number, a deeper bearing seat should be considered. For example, in this application, with the seat depth at 2.5 inches, the joist requires a larger top cord and bearing angle. But if we use a 5-inch seat depth, we can meet the R10 value with a standard top cord and bearing angle. The result is the use of 40% less steel to provide the required design strength. Here is an example of what we mean by designating load locations. Determining loads and locations of loads on joists will decrease costs. Precise information for joist sizing is imperative. In this example, locating the loads at 10 feet from each end allows for the designation of 24 KSP joists. This results in a steel weight savings of 36%. KCS joists can often be specified without input from the joist manufacturer. However, KCS joists are almost always more expensive than providing specific loading criteria for a specific joist design. For example, in this case, the savings using a load zone joist is 3.2 pounds per foot for a total weight savings of 21%. The vast majority of steel joists and joist girder designs call for constant depth sectioning in the joists and girders. This traditional approach is often not cost efficient. Large amounts of steel are being structurally underutilized. Incorporating girders and joists in the building's bracing scheme results in cost savings by eliminating heavier solid web framing members. Note the moment plates for both the steel joists and the joist girders. The plates develop the end moments, 
without introducing eccentricity into the joist and joist girder seats. Let's review a couple examples of optimized project design. The athletic wing over this school's gym featured three-piece Fink truss design. The Fink truss design cut steel tonnage by more than 50%. The design also cut costs in several other areas. Less manufacturing costs, less transportation, less on-site storage, handling, and erection costs. A one-step approach was created for placing the joist units at the school. The erector was able to completely assemble all joists on the ground. Once each unit was set on the walls, anchored, and attached, they moved on to the next unit, placing decking behind it. This eliminated having to assemble up in the air, which would have added time, safety, and cost issues. Improved joist design created a chain reaction of cost reductions on the school project. On average, 5% to 10% of expenditures related to steel joist and metal decking design can be engineered out of a project. Another increasingly popular option for project design and cost optimization is the use of castellated and cellular beams. These are especially suited to parking garages and other long-spanned applications with inherent advantages. Fortified strength comes from the way the beam halves come together in the manufacturing process. You can also see that the cutout shape looks like the turrets on a castle. Some key structural advantages include an increase in beam depth and an increase in beam strength without adding steel. The beam is highly cost effective for longer spans, popular in garages, stadiums, and open air office buildings.